Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A big step in the remarkable recovery of Damar Hamlin. Doctors comfortable enough with his condition to let him fly home to Buffalo. It is a major positive development for the Bills' safety. So many people have been pulling for in the weeks since he collapsed from cardiac arrest during an NFL game. Within just the past couple of hours, doctors in Cincinnati announced Hamlin had been flown back to Buffalo. He's going to continue his recovery at Buffalo General Hospital and then a transition back to getting home. The Cincinnati doctors today said Hamlin has started physical and occupational therapy. He was able to walk around the hospital on Friday. Uh, one of the doctors said Hamlin's making great progress and is on, as they put it, an accelerated trajectory in his recovery. And Hamlin tweeted about an hour and a half ago expressing his thanks for the care he received in Ohio and saying the doctors and nurses at Buffalo General Hospital are already making him feel at home. That's great. Mm -hmm. Our other top story here at five. We're getting some answers to the mystery of a woman's body found in a shallow grave last week. That grim discovery made on Hilldale Street just east of Van Dyke on Detroit's east side. The remains have now been identified and Sean Lay is live with what we know so far. Sean. Kim, you hit the nail on the head. Grim and sad discovery here because we're talking about someone's loved one, a young woman. She went missing last September. Her family has been frantically searching for her. She has been identified as that body in that shallow grave. Here's the latest. Her name is Alyssa Ichu, and since the 28 year old went missing last September 20th, her family's hearts have been hurting as they have been searching for her. Last Wednesday night, a horrible discovery here. A DTE worker saw a hand sticking out of the ground in the backyard of a home on Detroit's east side. A woman's body discovered in a shallow grave. Now family members say they've been told the body found is that of Ichu's. Her aunt posting to Facebook, quote, my beautiful niece has come home. Our IP Alyssa Catherine, we love you to the moon and back. And now this GoFundMe to help the family with burial costs, saying Alyssa's family hired a private investigator to help find her when she walked away from a rehabilitation center. Detroit police still investigating. We asked Chief White for an update late today. I got briefed on it uh, today, uh, and I'm being briefed on it daily. Uh, we're waiting on a cause of death. The, the FBI is involved and they're partnering with uh, our homicide team. And uh, as soon as we know more, you will know more. Back here live, you heard the chief say FBI now partnering with homicide on this important case here. Big questions here. What is that cause of death? But who put Alyssa in that shallow grave in that backyard? We'll stay on it. Live tonight, Sean Lay, Local 4. We back know to you. you will. Okay, Sean, thank you. The normal back to school routine has been a bust at a high school on Detroit's east side because some pipes burst and caused some major damage inside Southeastern High School. So now they're scrambling to make repairs, but also to get students online for their lessons. Priya Mann with more on what that means for the school and the students. Instead of school buses, a row of Belfort property restoration trucks after extensive flooding at Southeastern High School closed the entire building on what should have been the first day of students returning after the holiday break. The impact is catastrophic. Dumpsters were brimming with the aftermath of a massive flood over the holiday. <laughs> On Monday morning, restoration crews were at Southeastern High School instead of students. This was the first day back and they could not come, so it was very sad. From the third floor down to the first, burst pipes led to millions of dollars in damage. We're talking about flooring, insulation and walls being removed, a tile being removed, wiring exposed, paint, you name it, instructional material, technology um, ruined. DPSCD estimates repairs will take at least two months. Lakia Wilson Lumpkins is with the Detroit Federation of Teachers. I'm very sad by what I just saw in the building because this is a disruption to instruction, um, not just for kids, but for our educators that provide that daily instruction for kids. The district now pivoting to online learning. Students can pick up laptops on Tuesday and Wednesday. Online learning begins Thursday. The gym, thankfully, was not damaged, so athletics may continue with a modified schedule. We are at a critical time. We're at second card marking. This is also our semester um, changeover in the next couple of weeks, and so grades are, are crucial.
Yeah, this is going to be a challenging time for students and for teachers. And of course, repairs could take anywhere from two months or longer. We'll keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, there are plenty of Southeastern students who rely on grab and go meals. They will be available this week on Tuesday and Thursday. And then starting next week and until repairs are completed, they will be available on Mondays and Thursdays at the school. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Yeah, okay, Priya. Police Chief James White revealing Detroit's crime numbers for 2022. In a news conference today, he cited an 11% overall reduction in violent crime, but he noted an uptick in violent crimes by juveniles driven by conflicts developing over social media. Things like that are certainly hard for us to get in front of. Uh, you know, I certainly believe that social media needs to have some culpability in what we're seeing in our communities uh, beyond just allowing these things to happen. Ahead at six, we'll have a closer look at which crimes increased and decreased and how the department plans to use those numbers moving forward. Of course, the Lions knew they were not going to be making the playoffs. They found that out just before taking the field in Green Bay last night. But sometimes the playoffs aren't everything. Or maybe we watch the Lions playoff game. <laughs> uh, after that win against the Packers, there's a ton of optimism. This is going to be like the longest offseason. I know. So Everybody's long. fired up. Uh, it just felt like a team that nobody would have wanted to play in the, off in yeah, the, in the postseason. Right. That's for sure. How was it, Bernie? You just got back. Uh, yeah. it, well, I, I, it's the same thing I said last night. I think they would have taken a day off and hoped the next season would start yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, because that's it, right. They have that momentum and they have that feeling and they had a winning record. But did you think you were seeing things last night or someone was playing a cruel joke on everyone? See, Seattle cruelly eliminates Detroit from the playoffs, but then in an even crueler fashion, the Lions eliminate the Packers just for kicks. <laughs> Payback is sweet. We've got highlights, fourth quarter. Aaron Rodgers is going to get hit here. He gets picked off by Kirby Joseph. So huge because the Lions ran out the clock and win it 20 to 16. And the party started for the Lions and their fans who celebrated beating the Packers at Lambeau Field. It was a night to remember. Well, when you have a big event like last night, you need to put someone and someone who can put a perfect bow on it. End of season verbiage is what we're talking about that makes sense to all. Standing by live with that is Rod Maloney. Good night. Good evening, Rod. <laughs> it's always fun to join you here in the sports department, Bernie, and those are that's high praise. But you know what? We were here today, and though they didn't make it to the playoffs last night, you would never have known that here today. There was pride. There was a lot of uh, happiness, joy. They were having fun as they were packing up to head out for the end of the year and they said you know if you think this was a pretty good season and it was a winning season wait till next year some may not return but many will so they signed jerseys for each other this afternoon offensive lineman Penny Sewell says of the Lions future uh, it's as bright as the sun uh, that's I feel I've I believe that with all my heart. Head coach Dan Campbell agreed. You have to meet a certain type of criteria to, to be here. Uh, we don't just strictly look at talent, you know, and and our guys have created that culture. You know, they've embraced it and it's part of who we are and it's it's why we'll always compete. Receiver Amon Ross St. Brown embodies a decidedly new Lions attitude. I think for us, just continuing to work because um, that's, you know, that's the kind of guys that we are in this building, in this locker room. Uh, we're hard workers. Um, we never shy, shy away. Rookie defensive end James Houston came out of nowhere for a spectacular season. The team, I know we're, we're going to continue to do better. Um, we're going to continue to strive to do better. Um, I feel like we set a standard for ourselves, and uh, we can't let ourselves you know, go below that. And quarterback Jared Goff told us. The sky's the limit for this group, and um, I think Dan said it best. Recently, when he said, uh, you know, the, the core of this team and the culture we've built um, is something that can stand the test of time. And the standard won't change, but the expectations will. I just can't wait for next season, man. It's just this season was cut too short. And I feel like there's way more on the table that we can get. We're going we're gonna to come next year, without a doubt. How did Bernie know that they were going to say that? Now, here's the thing. We talked to Jamal Williams, you know, the running back, broke Barry Sanders' touchdown record, had had 1,000 yards for the season, ending up on his second year of his contract. Does he come back or not? Well, we asked him about all of this. He said, oh, this Lions team is going to be hot next year. He'd like to be here, but he said he doesn't know because, frankly, he doesn't want to talk business, and he stands to make a lot of money, so he doesn't want to mess anything up. But i got to tell you, they were happy out here today in Allen Park. Back yeah, 
He's all Good dog reason. up in this mug, oh, Jamal yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's dog. great. And he's so, so good last Such night. Such a good interview. I love him in the locker room. He's yeah. a real critical part there, too. Really One Rod, piece. great job. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I thought we should say that. On, on loan to the sports department. <laughs> yeah. I love it. More coming up from Bernie in just a little bit, but let's uh, turn things You know, that was the sun that you saw today. Out Unbelievable. There. <laughs> it was fantastic. I didn't even care what the temperature was. It was just, we were so happy to see it, Kim. I know, I almost put out a tweet that, hey, listen, don't panic. <laughs> I know that's, that, that, that's right. a right. burning thing in the right. sky. That's the sun. Uh, well, we won't see a whole lot of it for the rest of the week, but it'll be kind of weaving in and out from time to time. 40 at City Airport in Mount Clemens, 38 in Pontiac, Metro Ann Ann Arbor, also in Howell. It is 10 degrees warmer at this same time than it was yesterday. Uh, by 10 degrees in Pontiac, 9 degrees warmer in Mount Clemens, so we are trending in the right direction. Tomorrow will be a little warmer than today, but we'll also have a chance for a little bit of a rain-snow mix. Now, we do have some light winds, so wind chills make it feel more like the low 30s. 35 at City Airport, 30 Metro Airport. For the daytime tomorrow, midday, we'll have quite a few clouds and maybe just a little bit of a light snow rain mix, very light, and then it clears out by 4 o'clock with highs in the upper 30s. The rest of your work week forecast coming up in a few minutes. But first, if you want to have the radar in the palm of your hand and specific to your neighborhood, all you have to do is go download the Forewarn Weather app. It's free. Search it in your favorite app store. Just type in WDIV.